For the last five years, our bread and butter has been our reds and whites. Our House of Kings Merlot, our Syrah, our Pinot Grigio, our Chardonnay. If you are biting my bourbon thing, I'm a killer bitch. Hey. What? I, I said bitch, not bitch. Hey, no one's biting anything, but we haven't thought about dessert wines. Why should we? Profit margins are low. He's right. Not worth it to a vineyard our size. That's because they haven't been marketed correctly. I really love the show. Um, I love I love shows that get me on the first episode of buy in. And by the first episode, I was like, yo, I love this. I love this story of generational wealth. I love the the the, the story of a family where the matriarch or the patriarch leaves and they leave a will. Like it's something that I want for us as a culture. And, and I think this show kind of like gives us a roadmap. How does it feel to to play these characters? I, I'll I'll start with you, Ashley. Um, um like, how does it feel to play these characters and tell this type of story? Uh, it feels like a dream to, to play this kind of character and to be involved in this type of story. Um, I feel like the world that Janine has created um, was incredible. And the thing that really hit me was um, that it's not just a TV show. There, there, there are Black-owned vineyards. There are uh, Black families that live this way. Um, and, and like most families, you know, despite the, the wealth and all of the amazing things that you see, we're all dealing with our issues, which grounds it and makes it really real. And Ebony, I mean, you, I mean, you've been, you've been made, making a splash on, on TV so far, but, um, but to have a series lead, to be like, you know, here are already, I have this amazing show with amazing cast and, you know, Isaiah and all these great characters, uh, with you, like, how does that feel for you as an actress at this point in your career to be able to to to, to lead the charge with with a, with an amazing team? <laughs> uh, well, first it's Ebene, by the way. I don't know if you hear my brother, but he's friends. Oh, uh, Ebene. <laughs> Sorry, I got you. I got you. No worries. It feels like a gift. It really does. It feels like a gift because I think, you know, I've wanted to be an actress since I was four. Um, and that started with me imagining myself in the center of the story. You know, I wasn't like playing pretend and pretending to be in the background or in support. It was like my show. <laughs> so, you know, and then you get into the industry and you're like, all right, I got to work my way up. And you realize the different challenges and, and you just try to do the best that you can with the opportunities that you're given. And I think at a certain time, it just felt like just somebody see me and see the potential and see that I can do so much more than I've had the opportunity to do. So to be able to step into a leadership position and then be surrounded by this cast by a cast who's supportive everyone is um, a unique talent everyone shows up to play everybody is there in support of the story nobody's checked out or jaded or over it or feels above it um it, it's a gift it's it's something i can't describe especially coming out of 2020 because we started this at the you know like second quarter of, of 2021 so to come out of a year of being at home with my thoughts <laughs> and my feelings <laughs> and sidelined in a real way. And then to get this opportunity to step up and just, you know, show out, I, I couldn't have asked for a better first leading role. And we couldn't ask for a better number one. <laughs> major facts, major And, and Raz, I don't want to sound like white folks when they like, I, I, got a, a, I got a black friend or whatever, but I got to ask this question. And I mean, Peter Dinklage kind of has made such an impact on like just being a powerful actor and not being able to like, you, you, can't, you can't judge him or misjudge. Like he's such a powerful character. And I wonder like seeing him play these roles that he has. And I, I mean, I think he deserves an Oscar nomination for a Serrano this year. Um, how, how has that been for you as an actor to see him play those roles and say like, you know, these opportunities are there. Yeah, Peter Dinklage is a trailblazer. He's that guy. Um, I actually got to meet him on the subway. It was crazy. It was amazing. And uh, he's always been that guy for me. And the guy that I've looked up to, that is a very talented actor that happens to be a little person, but that has never uh, sacrificed and, and um, done anything that would compromise his character as a person. And so he was always the goal. He was, he, and he was the trailblazer and is the trailblazer. So to follow in his footsteps has been nothing but amazing. And I've always been inspired by him. And I look forward to continuing to put up great work 
and follow in his footsteps and to, to be that guy for other people that have uh, dwarfism, but also just other actors and entertainers in general that have uh, unique features and, and aren't necessarily average or able, able-bodied um, because the spectrum of people with disabilities is far reaching. You play CFO in this family. I got to ask you, how good are you with your own money? Like, are you? Like- <laughs> I'm very good with my money. Uh, I'm very fiscally responsible. I'm thrifty. Uh, <laughs> uh, I pay my bills on time. If not early, I do not like debt. Um, so playing the CFO and being a very detailed oriented person that came natural to me. Um, and also just a person that uh, believes that success and excellent work can be an excellent equalizer. That's been important to me and that's important to Dana. So uh, I slid right into that character pretty quickly and very well. Um, And it was also fun to explore uh, the areas where Dana lets his drive for success and determination and uh, desire for respect affect his relationships with his siblings and his family and also his wife. And he, yeah, he has to deal with that throughout the season. I was, you know, <laughs> didn't want to give away too much. <laughs> so tune in. <laughs> Gotta ask, ask you all, I mean, cause I, I know um, m and and Ashley, you guys are also uh, in Harlem on a different network. And um, how does it feel at this age right now where there, is, there seems like a willingness to tell these different stories about us. It's not like just pigeonhole stories. We're not all gangsters. We're not all this. But as actors, to be able to get these scripts and say, yeah, I'm going to go off for this role and this role. How does it, I know you guys are young, all young actors, but how does it feel to be in this kind of golden era of Black stories and Black, you know, just, just stories in general? I'm so excited for us. I'm so excited for us. It's nice to like be in a season where it's not one or two scripts that you're like, oh, that's really where the meat is. I wish I was in that movie. I wish I was in that project. It's like, there's a wealth of opportunity. And I, you know, I know so many talented black performers that to not feel in competition with each other, but just to feel like, yeah, like do you, and to be excited to see what everybody's bringing to the table, what everybody's bringing to the party, to be able to see so many different formats too, like with, We're seeing great movies, we're seeing half hour comedies, we're seeing mockumentaries, we're seeing hour long dramas, like the wealth of the black experience on TV as we're seeing it right now, it just feels like being invited to a huge party. And I'm excited for us. I'm excited to stunt, like I'm excited for the kings to stunt, but I'm just like, I'm excited to cheer everybody else on and hopefully they cheer us on as well. So I would would, would definitely echo that. I, I feel that it is, an immense privilege Mm. to be here um, in this moment, um, highlighting, um, you know, Black women, I feel was maybe the most overlooked in the game Mm. and to be a part of that, um, where where it doesn't look like the stereotypical, oh, I'm a Black woman. Um, These are people, these these are women, they're beautiful, they're powerful, um, and to be a part of it is definitely a privilege. to say the very least. Mm-hmm. Lastly, I gotta ask, like, I'm drinking a, a Volpino red wine, Fox and yeah, Central. I see you. What, what, do you guys have a favorite wine? I mean, you said you're, I mean, and, and, what, and what is it? Uh, I, I, I'll start with you, Rant. So you have, do you have a favorite wine and what's your, what's your flavor of so? So TV magic, I actually do not indulge. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that, but, um, you know, I enjoyed the uh, faux wine on the show. <laughs> <laughs> Hibiscus mango tea. <laughs> that was really cool. Yeah. What about y'all? Well, I love, um, I think my favorite varietal is, I like Barolo. It's called the King of Wines, so I'm not surprised that that's my favorite. Um, I'm a fan of Italian red wines. Uh, so that's, that's you know, it, it, you got to spend a little money on that. But, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, when I'm like, that's, that's my favorite wine to drink. For me, it's according to mood. I like to pair my wine with the way that I feel, mm-hmm. the food that I'm you know, eating and Kings really did inform a lot of that. So now when I have a nice steak, I'll pair it with a Malbec 
Um, if I'm just relaxing and kind of doing a wine on its own, I'll do a, a calf. Um, and really, I've, I've learned a lot on, on how to actually enjoy my wine. Um, you really have to allow the wine to aerate. Um, so that all of the aromas and flavors uh, come forward. Um, you know, you want to swirl the glass and take your time and be patient with it. And it's going to be a more enjoyable experience. Mm -hmm. So yeah, just like that, go ahead and get that swirl on. <laughs> you want to take a sniff, like maybe two inches away from the glass. There you go. Let it breathe. And then you enjoy that sip. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And the sipping process isn't a sip and swallow. You want to really allow the, the, the flavors to kind of just you know, sit on the tongue. Um, and those things really just transform my wine drinking and enjoying that experience. I enjoyed you guys like some fine wine. I can't wait to see season two, three, and four, and five. Hey. And whatever you guys come out on, I am your fans. You can count on me on that. Thank you for the time. Happy holidays. Thank can't you wait to everybody. Thank you. Thanks, Jamal.